by managing them, we're not just managing them, we're also managing the natural processes which drive these uh, habitats. So there's a number of differences between this and what we normally consider some of the uh, more the harder structures for managing the shoreline. Next slide, please. So when we look through a number of different definitions, there were common, common themes. Um, and I think these are common things that we could use in the Bay. Shoreline protection, um, it particularly based upon uh, strategic uh, the, the, the restoration designs, providing restorations which also do another job. Uh, but those jo that could include um, redu um, managing uh, erosion, stabilizing the shoreline. They also they providing natural habitat for plants, for wildlife, and for people. So they're they're doing the double purpose. We're maintaining those coastal processes. We're minimizing coastal erosion and runoff. We're trying to use natural materials wherever possible. Although that's not always the case. Quite a lot of the shoreline has unnatural materials in place already, such as concrete. And so we might be thinking about how to adapt. We also got to think about how to adapt to sea level rise. We know that's going to be one of our common environmental changes that we're going to have across the bay. And so whatever projects we're having, we've got to think about how they're going to evolve over time. And that obviously leads to a, a number of different approaches. We have a very wide, diverse bay. So we're thinking about diverse suite of habitat approaches and methods. And often those several will be applied at one place, particularly where we have existing uh, hard structures, which we, we were trying to incorporate into the softening them with, the, with new approaches. So hybrid types of approaches are going to be important. Next slide, please. So you often see this as, as a gray, a green gray spectrum. There's various versions of this is from the, uh, the Corps of Engineers. And we start on the left-hand side with um, a, uh, the, 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 the marshes and the, 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 the eel grass beds, all on one side. There's no structures in here. But then gradually, as you move across, you start introducing um, other types of uh, uh, habitats, uh, beaches, uh, types of uh, sills in there, which may be from woody debris or some cobble uh, elements. And then as you're going further across, you start coming across uh, uh, revetments and bulkheads and, and, um, and sea walls. So there's a large uh, range of, of opportunities here. And each of these is going to be very specific to the site. Next slide, please. So in the in the the projects that we've been looking at in the in the uh, region advancing living shorelines project, which Marilyn were talking about, we try to cover large those, that those range of uh, of habitat approaches. We talked about we're looking at near shore reefs. You'll see that there's a number of pilot studies in the bay for those. There's um, uh, eelgrass plantings. Um, again, there's a long history of doing that in the bay. Uh, and vegetation plantings, uh, beach restorations, and particularly there's there's a few in Marin now with the, which um, Roger Leventhal and others are leading, um, woody debris and 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 allowing small scale sediment additions. Um, quite that one advantage, um, one example of that is uh, Sears Point restoration, um, invasive species prevention and and removal. Obviously, that's happening uh, quite a way across the across the bay. Um, through the Invasive Spartina project, uh, high tide refuge islands in the South Bay, um, providing some uh, changes heterogeneity into the topography. Uh, and then we're looking at the, some of the, the, those harder areas, looking at biologically enhanced rock slopes, gray green seawalls, um, and looking at the removal of, of structures and debris from the the shoreline as well so different ways of approaching this and those are these are what we're all considering as being living shorelines I and mean, there's going to be more but this is the sec this is the spectrum we're looking at at the moment and it'd be great to get your ideas and thoughts in the future about other approaches next slide please of course we're not acting in a vacuum this kind of shoreline has been discussed for the last decade or so in a number of different regional goals and guidance documents which have had a lot of input from many people on this on this uh, call and looking across um, those areas, starting with the subtitle goals and then the Bayland um, Habitat Goals uh, update in 2015. The Adaptation Atlas provided some uh, ways in which they could be used, these could be incorporated in the shoreline. And in the Estuary Blueprint and in the, the, the Joint Venture 
uh, recently picked up goals. They've, these kind of living shorelines projects are really highlighted, working with nature, incorporating nature into as many projects as we can. And then, as I'm sure many of you are reviewing right now, the regionally, the shoreline adaptation plan from BCDC talks a lot about these types of projects. What we're interested in is how do we do these and how do we scale them up to get those to provide a, the, the types of um, benefits that those uh, those types of uh, regional goals are looking for. Next slide, please. So I've, I've, everything's been rosy up till now, but of course there are barriers or ways that we're slowing down this scale of innovation. We're still learning. We're at the beginning, we're at the bottom of the learning curve. We're learning how to do these projects. There's a lot of science and, da and data that's been gained from the, uh, this experience of pilots, but we also need to work harder on, on uh, filling some of those gaps. And that's where the, a lot of the projects that are being proposed, the, the value of, of those to fill in some of those science and data gaps. There's institutional inertia. We aren't used to building these. We've only, it's in the, in the last decade or so, they've been coming into, into the shoreline. Um, and so understanding uh, their, their benefits, how to build them, how to, how to monitor them, how to manage them, um, they all require uh, time. And so there is some inertia as we try to move the, the, the needle. Um, in lack of the broader context, it'd be at the moment, they're individual pilot projects not necessarily joined into a larger program, not necessarily put into larger plans. So providing that larger societal benefits to the work we do and scaling up. And lack of advocates. There are some with Marilyn and Chaler and Kathy Boyer. There's a long list of advocates, but we're looking at the group today to become advocates and to really start pushing forward and with a, with a common message and a joined up thoughts about how to do this. And we need to do this by imp importance of demonstrating the feasibility, the importance of pilot projects, importance of monitoring those pilot projects, and then taking the lessons learned from those pilot projects and documenting their success and putting them into best management practices. So we feel that's the way that we're building uh, this, this, uh, this um, area of practice, but it's still taking a lot of work. So that's a good point for the collaborator to start thinking about what are the types of uh, types of um, benefits that we can get from here? What are the opportunities? And then also, what are the barriers? And I think, Emily, you have a Mentimeter piece. We do. And Yeah, thanks so much. Go ahead, Jeremy. And as we're going through that, um, if people have questions or notes, and I noticed that I, questions about could we provide the links, Everything on the what the, we're we're we're, ha we're presenting today will be following up with with the the slides um, and with the the recordings of the, the the presentations, but also links relevant links. And we hope to build as part of the collaborative build up this uh, as resources what's useful for you to to move forward. So if uh, Emily, do you want to move forward? 